Monet Cornet here, photographer from Silver Paws Studio. And once a week, I go out to Animal Friends Alliance and photograph adoptable dogs and cats. Right now, I'm just doing dogs. And so you're going to see my whole process start to finish today. And I've been wanting to share this for a while because it's something I looked for when I first started volunteering about six years ago. And I really wish I knew the process. So I want to just take you with me today. Every once in a while, I hear back from the shelters and causes that I volunteer at, and they say, oh, it was so great. Somebody saw the photo that you took on the adoption site, came in and met with the dog and ended up adopting them. Can I sit there? Okay. There you go. Okay. To tell you the truth, I'm feeling a little down today. It's cloudy, it's winter. Eh, I don't know, just one of those one of those mornings. But I know what always makes me feel better is going out to the shelters and photographing adoptable animals. So I'm looking forward to that. That I think will cheer me up a lot. And I wanna take you along with me. And I don't normally take my dog Bailey with me, but Animal Friends also has a grooming salon and today is her grooming day. <laughs> so she gets to go along with. But I wanna show you the entire process. Uh, but first I have to hurry up and eat this breakfast <laughs> and get out there. It's a half hour drive away and uh, see what we get. I can think of one in particular where somebody had contacted me to take a picture of their two dogs and them and they said oh I'm pretty sure you took her picture when she was at the shelter before we got her what three or four years prior. And I said oh wow that is so cool and sure enough I looked in my archives and I had taken this dog's adoption photo and so we could tell all kinds of stories about what her life has been like in the family since then and oh, really right. catch up with way. them. It was a really awesome experience and I love it when those kinds of things happen. Okay. Bailey's all dropped off at grooming and I've got a few minutes until I go over to photograph the dogs in the same building essentially but my helper won't be here uh, until 9 30 so uh, usually the first thing that I do is the night before I text the front desk person and say is there any any dogs available to photograph and if so which ones and then they will text me back and if there's more than two dogs, if there's three or more, I will make the half hour trek up here. And so that's just what I have decided at this shelter. And for here, I don't really have a set volunteer helper at this point. I have someone that's recently started helping. Um, she's on vacation right now. And so I think a staff member is just gonna help today. But they usually find me a volunteer out of their volunteer pool. That would be a good fit. I like to come out on Monday mornings because that just works well for my studio schedule and so and that works well for here. Uh, of course we have lots of different safety protocols in place these days and so it's nice to have this big outdoor run that we could photograph in and then we also have the meet and greet room and because this is before hours they don't need the meet and greet room so actually coming early works out really well for that. It is pretty cold out today. It's about 16 degrees and a little bit of snow. And if the sun was shining, it might be tolerable <laughs> to photograph outside, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna go inside today. So I'll show you how I set up my little speed light in this room. It's a little echoey, so I apologize in advance for the audio, but I also wanna show you the yard. So um, I'll go out there and walk you around the yard and tell you, uh, kind of how I set up out there as well. I, I think that's it. So the next step is I will go inside about 9.30 and I'll have a little meeting with my helper and we'll decide, I'll give them the list. We'll decide if we're gonna be inside or outside typically. And then I will go set up my camera and get all the bandanas and bow ties while they go get one of the dogs. And then uh, they just bring the dogs in and out while I stay in that room. Uh, so that works out really, really well. I'd have a really difficult time doing this by myself. So I highly suggest having some kind of helper. Yeah. So I've got one hour that I allot here 
And, and most times I will go an hour here and then I'll go to the cat rescue. Hopefully you saw that video of my time at the cat rescue, which is a really different process you'll see than this place. Um, but with schedule conflicts and things like that, and they're adopting the kitties out so fast right now, I'm not going to the cat shelter as much. So we're just going to have the one hour here at the dog side and then we'll head home and I'll walk you through the, um, editing as well okay uh so let's uh let's start with just kind of taking a look around before people get here working with animal friends alliance will always have a special place in my heart they were the first place i ever volunteered my pet photography skills to and they were so Ooh. kind okay it's really cold out uh but this is their dog play area, meet and greet for outside. It's a pretty good size. Uh, I want to show you, I always point that way, which is the sun's about over there, but you can see there's just basically trees and a fence as the backdrop. So I really like that. Sometimes I'll use that fence as a backdrop because it's low, <laughs> you know, uh, but over here where there's the metal fencing and you can see the parking lot and all kinds of buildings and things, I don't usually shoot that direction. There's just pea gravel on the ground. So um, <laughs> it's just kind of a neutral color there. But, and so it's really pretty good size. The first thing I'll do is I'll move any of this, any of the furniture over to that side. Sometimes it's over here because usually I have a nice little piece of shade for people to stand in right here under the tree. And then I stand over there with my camera. Whoops, there's the tree. <laughs> so I just make sure all of the things are picked up out here. And so that place is clear and behind them is clear. And then what I'll do typically is over here, I will put my camera bag on a chair there. And then I'll put my boxes of bandanas and bow ties just on the ground lined up right there. And I like to have my camera bag up on the chair because boy dogs <laughs> and then I just use my phone to keep track of the names and so that's pretty much how I set up out here but it is really really cool ah! so let's uh yikes let's go inside Now, when we pick out what they're going to wear, I have a variety of collars and bow ties and bandanas. And sometimes they don't wear any of these things, but we like to use them as just something a little bit different, uh, a little bit something to catch somebody's eye as they're looking at the adoption sites. Sometimes if a dog we think won't want to have a collar on, we'll just slip on a bandana. If they will tolerate a collar with like a little bow tie for just a moment, we'll click on a regular collar with a flower or ba uh, bow tie or some kind of decoration on it. Although I have that window, it does get a little dark on this side. So I always stick this flash right here to bounce up off the ceiling you know up there and then back over here to be the other side from the window yeah and then today i'm going to use the 28 to 75 millimeter lens this isn't a big room when i use the 7200 my back is always all the way against this wall uh, so i've got my trigger on here for the flash and my helper went to go get the first dog and I should take this lens cap off. Okay, so here's the list of dogs. I just keep it on my phone, and as I photograph them, I put a one, two, three, so I know when I go to edit. For a starting point for our settings, we have ISO 400, 1 250th of a second, shutter speed, and F4.5, and I've got the flash set on quarter power. And that's my starting point. I took a test shot of the room, and we'll go from there. Let's take a look here. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. And I end up with auto white balance because the sun is kind of coming and going now. So, all right, we should get our first dog in a second. What are you doing, honey? Oh, she's a baby. <laughs> 
When I first meet the dogs that I'm about to photograph, I generally let them kind of wander around, maybe walk into the boxes of all the props to choose what they want to wear. And then I just talk with my helper. They have read the cage card. Maybe they've even worked with these dogs before. And if I know they're extra shy, I give them space. If they're extra hyper, we try to be as calm as possible. So they'll follow that body language. We find out right away if they know know anything, which means do they know sit? Do they know their name? Are they treat motivated? And all this happens pretty much in the first few seconds to a minute that we're with the with the dogs. Yeah, he doesn't know much like sit. Mm -hmm. That's right. But you never know. I highly rely on my helper who often is a dog walker or even a coach or someone who is more skilled in dog training and behavior than me. Uh, so I really like to have their input in these situations too. <laughs> This particular day at Animal Friends Alliance, I was working with a new volunteer, well, new to me, and it just so happens she is aspiring dog trainer. <laughs> and she just had a natural demeanor and connection with these dogs, which was awesome. So I really just had to show her around where I needed her to be and where I need the dogs to be in relation to me and my camera. And it worked out really, really well. Hi, <laughs> What a cute puppy. Uh, so she did pretty good. This is a volunteer that's never worked with me before. And so we just kind of figured out where to be in the room. Uh, I'm using a lens I, don't, I haven't used before much really. Uh, and so I did have to lower the shutter speed to one two hundredth of a second. Um, it just seemed a little dark still. And I have room I can up my flash from a quarter power to half power if I need to, things like that. And I'm also shooting in raw, so it'd be pretty easy for me to um, up the exposure in the computer later. So one dog out of five, done. Oh, good starting to sniffer. Okay. Okay. If they're super, super wiggly, uh, sometimes the kind of collars that clasp don't work out so well. So we look at their behavior, uh, how approachable they are. And then we also, of course, look at their coloring. And so a darker dog, they uh, so we sometimes put on patterned bandanas and ties or brighter colors. If the dog's coat already has a lot of that, then we're going to put on maybe a solid color. Oh my gosh, look at the pearly lights. Oh. Oh, good. And so we think about all of the colors of the dog too. Oh, yeah. Hi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's, that? What's that? Is it delicious? It might be. You never know. <laughs> okay, go see friend. Ready. Often dogs have never seen um, a big camera with a big lens on it, and they can be either scared or curious. And I always give them the opportunity to explore my camera if they want. I will set it on the ground or let them come up and sniff it or even lick it. <laughs> uh, so I want them to be comfortable around my camera. Some dogs don't like you to stand over them, so I might skip that particular angle of photo for them. Uh, and then some dogs, you know, it's nice to have the long lens and I can step back. I want them to be as comfortable as possible around this big piece of equipment they have likely never seen. <laughs> oh. 
dogs will often run back and forth between me and my handler. Oftentimes I'm sitting on the floor, so they take that as an invitation to come play. But I try to be boring where I turn my back and I don't look at them so that the handler has a chance to be more exciting and that they'll go to the handler. So you'll see me do that several times uh, during this day. <laughs> okay, dog number two did good. What I usually do as they go get the other dog, I have a couple of minutes to scroll through all the pictures on the back of the camera. And with my camera, I have C3 set up to star them. So if there's a picture I like, I'll just press C3 and I get a little star. And then Lightroom will see that. And so I can try to cull all the photos before I even get home. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna go through the last two dogs and star a few that I think those are good ones. We're gonna edit those. Oh, Corey with a K, right? Okay. Now remember. Hi, sweetheart. Would you like to wear? Just like with the cat rescue photos, I'm looking to create at least three different images. And oftentimes it's a full body and a close up and maybe a profile. So you can imagine that their full body standing, maybe a close up of them sitting, and then maybe them looking up at the person working with them. Also throw in some goofball pictures, the tongue out Tuesday type. <laughs> or their eyes squinted shut, something that kind of shows expression and personality. Those are always really, really fun to capture with dogs because between their fur and their skin and their lips and their ears, there's a massive amount of expression that you could pull uh, in, in those in-between images especially. So although you're trying for those top three to really show people the dog with their eyes open and looking at the camera and things like that, be sure sure to get those in-between images too that uh, just kind of show their personality. I think that's really, really important. <laughs> hurry, 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 you close, sweetheart. Come here. Hurry, 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 hurry. Right here. Yeah. And let's see, we'll have the, the treat right over, like right here. Okay, yeah. One thing I do want to mention when you're working with any handler where the animal is on a leash, none of these dogs that day needed a leash, but if you're out in a field or they need to be on a leash for just whatever reason, oftentimes we put a leash on them just because they're just all over the place and try to keep them in one spot. But always tell your helper to make sure that the leash is coming up from the back side of the dog because I always edit the leashes out and it's so much easier than trying to edit them from the fur on the front or their neck or their chest. Also holding the leash straight up. And so I could do a separate video on working with handlers and helpers and clients to put the leash in the right position because it's so much easier to edit that out later if it's in the right position. Okay, that's three dogs. And this is typical Colorado. It's sunny, but it's snowing. Let's see if I can show you that. Can you see that? <laughs> There's so many talkative dogs today. Uh, I wanna to show you a couple of things with this particular room is this spot on the wall. I have to edit that out and any plugins, I have to edit those out. 
And of course we have the concrete floor. So I could come in here and set up a backdrop and do all that, but I only tend to do that during special occasion marketing type things. Um, it's just, it's too much for me to do. <laughs> and it's difficult for the handlers too. So I don't have a dedicated spot and that's okay. We just edit that out and it seems fine. So. Aww. Oh, you did that good. Oh, good. Having volunteered for many different animal causes, and the most being at places like dog and cat rescues, I'm always thinking about other imagery they could use. Uh, so if you watched the cat video, we did some with scarves on and that was for some cars and some other things they were doing. Sometimes they want a picture that they could put a social media meme on or a call to action, some text on it, or maybe the dog's nose is pointing up in one direction or the other. And that could be a cool way to point out something that they want to draw people's attention to in a newsletter. And so I'm always thinking of what they can do with these photos beyond their adoption photos. So uh, be thinking about that as you submit your images and as you take them. Oh my gosh, Esther is so good at this. I'm really lucked out uh, with someone who aspires to be a dog trainer and so kind of knows how to be around the dogs and carefully and gently get them into place. I can't believe it. I never get dogs to lay down and we got some such cute ones. Two more to go. We actually have one more dog. The other dog has just had surgery and is sleeping, <laughs> so we don't want to disturb him. Uh, but one more and little bitty chihuahua. Oh my goodness! Oh, he's dizzy! Are you the Oh my gosh, how small are you? A common question people ask me about volunteering their photography at rescues and shelters is how to even approach them. Now, in my personal experience, I physically walked in and talked to the staff there. I always recommend people check out Hearts Speak, H-E-A-R-T-S. S -P -E -A -K org, and I'll put that link in the description here too. Heartspeak.org is all about artists helping animals and I always suggest people use this as a resource. They have a very minimal membership fee and that is mostly like to keep up the website, but they have all kinds of resources for volunteer photography and art services. And one of them is a letter. So I, if you're not able to physically go into, or you rather just start with an email, they do have some options in their HeartSpeak website. Awesome, awesome resource. A couple of things I didn't talk about directly in this video are your volunteer hours. Most of these causes will have you track your hours and that really helps them figure out where they can ask for funding, what supplies they might need, where they might need more volunteer help. So make sure that you're 
helping them out by tracking your hours. But also, if you plan on doing anything with the photos yourself, let them know. Now, the Animal Friends Alliance that I work with, they absolutely love it. So whenever I post a photo, I always, always tag them wherever I post it and then they can share it. So the more people that can see the adoptable animals and learn about this cause, the better, but some places might have more restrictions on that. So just be sure that you talk to the shelter about what you can do with the photos. Remember, you are taking the picture and you are the copyright holder. And so you technically own the photo, but you're doing this as a volunteer effort. Um, so make sure everybody's on the same page. <laughs> he did pretty good. Uh, that was our last one. Yeah. I want to show you just a couple more things here. They just stack together and clip together like that. Okay, here we go. All done. And then these we keep under the desk in the main office so they don't get mixed in with foster or any other kind of collars and bandanas. Okay, so that really was typical. We can get about five dogs in. Uh, that went really, really well. My goal is to get three images that show different sides of them, maybe a tight, sitting sideways, full body, whatever it is. And that went super well. Next thing is I'm just gonna pack everything up and we'll go home and edit. <gasps> okay. <sighs> I am in such a better mood. It always is so helpful to come out and photograph these dogs and just imagine the people seeing this picture online and just looking into those dogs eyes and going oh that's the dog for me and that just kind of keeps me going every week a lot of people ask how can you do this like don't you want to adopt them all and I was like I can't adopt them all then I would be this place <laughs> and then also I'm just being that connector you know so I'll edit these at home and I'll send them off today, same day, so they can put them up on the adoption site and maybe someone will see them today and come down and be able to add them to their family. <sighs> so it's super gratifying. It's always good to get out and do some volunteer work and photograph some dogs and <sighs> yeah. Bailey's still getting groomed, so I think I'm gonna go run and grab a coffee. Okay, Bailey's actually already ready, so we can go get her and maybe get her a pup cup at the coffee shop. <laughs> Hi! Hello! You have a new bandana! Are you so excited to see me? I can hardly see you. Ready? Yeah? Let's go! Alright! Honey, you look so adorbs! Hi! Yeah. Okay. Bailey was way too keyed up. And so we had to stop at this national area and take a short walk. It's up to 22 degrees now and it's sunny. Oh, you feel better, honey? Yeah, we both need a little bit of walk. Now we can go get coffee and pup cup. Yeah, you want a treat? Yeah, me too. Let's go get one. How's today? And then my dog's insisting on a pup cup. Of course, pup <laughs> cup. And no, no crunchy bone, please. Okay, just the pup cup. Yeah. The web, you yeah. got it. What else today? That's it. Sweet, we'll see you up at the window. Okay, thanks. You can make it a pup cup, bay. Pup cup for bay. <gasps> bay, are you ready for a pup cup? You are? Um nom nom nom. And I'm the weirdo who ordered an iced drink on a 22 degree day, but I must be, <laughs> I must be thirsty. All right, so we're gonna have this breakfast slash lunch and then head home and put all the pictures on the computer. <coughs> nom, 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 nom. All right, Bay, let's go in.
All right, we have all of the photos loaded into Lightroom. And what I do for file structure in my Lightroom is I have my 2021 Lightroom catalog. And then under that is 2021 Animal Friends Alliance, which is the rescue I work with. And under that, I put the day's date and then Animal Friends Alliance. So for today, it would be 0208 2021 Animal Friends Alliance. And then after I save this, it'll have an edited folder within that too. So pretty easy structure by date. And if you take a look at the screen here, you can see how some of the photos do have the little star. And I was able to do that for all of them, except I think the last one, which happens a lot, is I get to the last one and then when I'm done, I just pack everything up. So I'm just gonna really quickly look through this last dog. I'll select several and press the N key for survey mode and kind of look through really quickly to see which ones are my favorite. And pretty quick, we find about three or so that are perfect. We're gonna sort by one star. Now each of the dogs, we did five dogs, they should each have several images. While I'm at the shelter, I do go through and star them in camera like I showed you, but often I end up with too many. So maybe I have five or six or seven images and I really only need three. So I just quickly scroll through all of these again, maybe give them two stars this time. I'm looking for different expressions, different crops, different poses. And so I'm just gonna run back through here in a quick few minutes and sort them out again so I only get down to those few that I need. This is always my first step. The very first picture I will crop, I will do lens correction. And if they're all inside like this with pretty much the same light, I'm gonna do a little white balance here, which is white balance. I'm gonna take the picker over here. That's much better. A little too blue though. Let's warm it up a little. Okay, because that wall isn't totally white. Then we're gonna say auto on the exposure and move it from there. That still doesn't look that great. I'm gonna pop it up a lot more. There we go. And I don't tend to like vibrance and saturation because I want it to be a true color. So we've got this first picture. Now what I'm gonna do is select all of them and we're gonna sync while we're in develop mode. We're gonna say sync and we're gonna do white balance, basic exposure, crop and lens correction. I think that's everything that we wanted synchronize. That'll take a couple of minutes or a couple of minutes. That'll take a moment. It's not that slow. Hello. <laughs> and then we're just going to go in and if I press R, we're just going to make sure all of these are all the way down. You know, luckily none of these dogs need a leash today. Woohoo. So here I take the next few minutes to crop in square to all of the rest of the pictures. And what I'm looking for is excluding things like spots on the wall as much as I can, the handler out of it, deciding if I want full body or close up, uh, close up sometimes if they have funny expressions, things like that. I am trying to get around always that paint spot on the wall and trying to figure out how I can crop that out. This dog has a fun expression, things like that. So. I'm trying to get a really, really quick workflow here in cropping all of these dogs to the square format. With the 42 megapixel camera, I'm lucky that I can crop in quite a ways on a lot of these images and still have a high quality. Sweet. Okay, we're down to our last one here. See, we're just flying through. We're flying through everybody. This is the point. You want to get really fast at this. Now, if you are a volunteer photographer and you think someday you want to be, uh, you know, you want to take this pro, um, this is really great training grounds for stuff like this because at a regular photo shoot, you might do be doing this too. Like you might have a hundred photos. One thing that Lightroom's okay at is stuff that's way over here and way over here. As far as the um, spot removal tool, I'm just scrolling up with my mouse. Otherwise, I don't really like the spot removal tool. I've probably mentioned that on this channel before. It's not, it's not that great. So in this situation, it's okay. I've got it on clone. Let's see what heal does. Heal's a little better. Okay, and then we're gonna do this. Otherwise, I'm gonna right click and edit in Photoshop, which I'm going to have to on a couple of these. All right, that looks fine. 
but I'm going to fly through these. Now, while I'm doing this, if any of you think uh, that you're kind of like, I'd like to go pro at some point, I encourage you to join the ProPat Photog email group. And I will put a link to that in the description. And you will get an email every week when these videos come out with some other goodies in there. And then I have a Facebook group that's uh, free and open as well. And so you are invited to join that. Both of those links will be here in the description. All right, see, that actually worked out pretty good, didn't it? In here, I fight with that healing brush tool in Lightroom, and it really doesn't do very well if it's close to anything else. I also go back through and adjust any white balance or exposure in all of the individual pictures. So you can see we got through the main edits in just a few minutes. That's all. It took about 15 minutes to edit all of these photos. I'm not going to show you the recording of me going over to Photoshop to edit out some of those other spots closer to the dogs. I would rather do a more dedicated in-depth video for that. If that's something you'd like to see, be sure to comment below. Okay. Everything is all edited now. Now I go back to the list of names I had on my phone and I name them all in the metadata here. I had to go to text, go to title, and this little one's name is either Irish or Iris. I don't know. And I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna highlight all of those in the grid view in the library. And I'm gonna go over title and Irish. Okay, so now every one of these, when I look at it, should have Irish in the title. Okay, and then my second dog, dog number two was Riley. And dog number three, Corey with a K. Title number four, Madonna. And little bitty guy here title is Vinny. Okay, now that all of these have their title of their name, I'm going to highlight all of them, right click, export, and I have a pre preset here, AFA Animal Friends Alliance 2021. I'm just going to do that. You can see how it says same folder as original, Animal Friends Alliance. I'm going to change that to today's date. Okay. And then you can see we have custom settings. I've gone here and we have Irish, which is the title, and then Animal Friends Alliance, Little Paw Studio, and then the original file number. This is gonna be JPEG 80. The long edge is gonna be 1200. Resolution's a little high, but I like it that way. I'm gonna use my gray logo in the lower right. Uh, I have a lot of different logos in here. And then export. Then you can see we're exporting them there and once they're all exported, they're just in that subfolder. And what I do is I make a Dropbox folder. So from there, what I do is I make a link for that Dropbox and I email it to everybody that needs it at Animal Friends Alliance and I just email them off. Epic Kate, will you roll a montage of the photos of these five puppies, please? <laughs> That is my workflow for photographing the dogs at the dog shelter. It's, it is quite different from what I do at the cat shelter, but it really works well for me and this type of shelter. I would love to know how you organize your days and your time at the shelters. How much time do you give it? How do you organize things? That kind of thing. I'm always <gasps> really fascinated with that. So Bay, what do you think? Is that all we need to tell people today? <laughs> I think that's about it for me today. Hope you enjoyed today's rundown and uh, Bailey's transformation, right, Bay? <laughs>
<laughs> if you have any questions, type it, type it below. Remember to uh, boop the like button and the subscribe if you enjoyed this. And what do we always say, Bay? Huh? I wish you many whoops, purrs, and T R E A T S's. Right, Bay? Yeah. Yeah. You got all the treats today, didn't you? You got your pup cup. It was so delicious. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs>